everybody, this is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you all back to the channel. And today we are taking the Palmetto State Armory Dagger Compact Model to the range. Uh, first of all, I want to send a little shout out to my stepdad for loaning me this pistol for today's range test. I know that we are long overdue for a dagger video. I've done a cleaning video quite a while ago, but we have yet to actually show you and talk about what it's like shooting this pistol at the range. And today we're going to make that happen. Uh, ammunition for today's test is going to be some bulk blazer brass ball ammunition, 115 grain. Uh, if we have any cycling issues with that, we do have some Fioki 115 grain we'll take with us. And I also want to run some Ammo Inc. 115 grain hollow points, uh, just to see how well it can handle some hollow point ammunition. Uh, today we're going to be doing what I call a standing accuracy test. It's basically standing on the firing line, shooting, giving you my impression, shooting is the best I possibly can. And what we're trying to do is to show you what an average shooter can produce out of the box, and uh, just to kind of give you some, some idea about what it's like with the experience with this pistol. Now, the only real uh, change that we have to this pistol is we do have a set of True Glow Tritium Night Sights that have been installed. Um, otherwise, the gun is basically stock as you get it from Palmetto State Armory. Okay, so just some basic background information on the pistol. Um, it is a striker fired pistol. It does weigh 22.4 ounces. It does have an overall length of 7.15 inches. It has been clear, as you guys can tell. Verify, we're empty. We do have an overall width of 1.28 inches. We do have an overall height of 4.78 inches. We've got a barrel length of 3.9 inches. The barrel material is stainless steel, but it does have a coating on it. Uh, the barrel finish is a DLC coating. The slide material is stainless steel, and it does have an actual Cerakote FDE finish on it. And we'll talk about the finishes and frame colors here in just a moment. It does have a trigger block safety and trigger safety like a Glock, although the Glock trigger is much different from this particular model. And it does come with one standard capacity 15 round magazine for a total capacity of 15 plus one, or basically 16 rounds. Now, when you go to the Palmetto State Armory, website if you look these up they do come in a variety of, of frame colors and finishes and slide styles so while it may not look like a clone exactly a direct carbon copy the internal components are going to be Glock compatible and that's a pretty big deal because there's so much out there that you could uh, do to this pistol if you wanted to now the ergonomics of this are a little bit different I don't have a Glock 19 to compare this to directly but I will say this the grip on it I do like better than a Glock 19 because it does flare out a little bit has a more of a bulge to it and I always found that the Glock 19 grip has always been really short on my hands I've got medium-sized hands and I generally have to rest my pinky on the bottom of the magazine. Uh, that is not the case with the uh, PSA dagger. One thing I did notice is that, you know, that Glock knuckle, as they call it, I wish this had just a little bit deeper cut in the trigger guard because I do feel my knuckle rubbing up against the trigger guard when I'm shooting it. Probably wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, wouldn't be a big deal in a self-defense situation. Might be a bigger deal, say, uh, you know, an extended range session or a class if you're going to take it. <laughs> Optics cuts on the top. I believe this is the RMR cut, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally off on that. But PSA does offer a variety of different footprints for the optics cut. And uh, that way you can get it to match whatever optic you're running. But overall, I mean, it does feel really well in the hand. Uh, the fit and finish is, is, is fantastic. The, the polymer feels just as rigid as an M&P or a Glock. Um, you do not have a reversible magazine release, nor do you have a reversible nor ambidextrous slide stop slash slide release. So that is one thing about it. If you're a lefty, you're going to have to adjust for that. And at some point, who knows, maybe they'll, they'll up and make a new generation of this pistol. I'm not sure. Uh, three different frame sizes. This is the compact frame size. You can also get a large that mimics the G17. And then they also have a micro, not really micro, subcompact model that has the 15 round capacity, but has a shorter frame to it. It's kind of its own thing. A little bit of a six hour P365 competitor. Uh, we are empty. The trigger itself is, is, you know, it's plasticky. It's just a little bit mushy. I mean, we're not talking, you know, precise uh, fit and finish here, but, but overall totally functional. Decent reset. It's about, a, oh, probably a little under a half inch reset, I suppose. But the trigger's fine. I actually like this better than the uh, Glock style trigger. This is more of a flat face trigger. And uh, and overall, I think it's going to work. And real quick, I want to give a little shout out to Aegis Gun Care. That's also a supporter of the channel. If you guys use the link down below, you can save 10% off Aegis Gun Care cleaning products, which are the best gun cleaning products in the industry. Uh, otherwise, you can also go to AegisGunCare.com to see what they have in stock. And you can find really cool things like this, such as the all-in-one cleaning kits that have multiple caliber capability. And they also help you keep your guns nice and clean and well maintained. So once again, use that affiliate link. You'll save 10% off your order and help the channel out. All right, let's go ahead and hit the range. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do, uh, let's see, 10 yards, three shot groups. This is my first time shooting this gun in probably about a year. The last time I shot it was after we put the sights on it. I took it out just to make sure that the uh, sights were going to stay on it. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. So we'll start off with that Blazer Brass Ammo, uh, five groups of three. And I'm just going to go ahead and cover up the dot with my front sight. 
And so we'll see where it prints from there. If I need to make some adjustments as we go around, we will. We're just going to be shooting for, for tightness of group initially. If I need to make some side adjustments, we'll do that a little bit later on. All right, so let's go and get started. Again, initially, the grip feels great. It's a real rugged, um, you know, rigid polymer. It doesn't feel flimsy or cheap at all, especially given the price point for the firearm. You'll be surprised what you're going to get. All right, here we go. A little bit high into the left. High into the left again. Okay, a little bit more to the left. And again, I do have a tendency to shoot to the left. And if it was a, a habit, I could adjust that sight just a little bit if necessary. All right, let's go to the top left. We'll just go ahead and shoot around the target a little bit. Recoil is very comfortable. I do notice as I rest my thumb on it, my thumb tends to rest on the takedown uh, little button here and not really up in the front. I need to move it up a little bit. So that might rub on your thumb a little bit as you have some extended shooting, shooting sessions with the pistol. All right, here we go. Right target, two o'clock. All righty. Okay, bottom right target. The the trigger is is very light. It does have a bit of a wall before it breaks, especially around the firing line. Wow, I flew that one. Okay, and then bottom left. Okay, I do feel like we need to adjust that rear side a little bit. We'll do that later off camera. Again, I'm just kind of going for group tightness, standing accuracy. Not bad, not bad. Okay, we're going to go ahead and swap out the target, and we will switch over to that uh, Ammo Inc. 115 grain hollow point. But performance is not bad. I can tell I definitely need a little more practice with it. All right, let's go and swap out the targets. Okay, so we're going to shoot some of these uh, Ammo Inc. hollow points that we have here. Um, I've had this ammo for a while. I've shot Ammo Inc. before. It's a pretty good brand. I've shot the 10 millimeter. and have not had any issues with it at all. It's American-made ammunition. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and show you these targets. We'll measure out the groups and just talk about the overall experience. And let's run some hollow points down through it. So, so far, we've had no issues. I know my stepdad told me has told me that this thing has never had a problem before. No problems with, with uh, failures to eject, no stove piping, nada. So we'll see how it runs this ammo. You never know what you're going to get until you try the ammo through the gun. And you always want to run a couple boxes of, of what you might be keeping as your carry ammo or your home defense ammo through the gun to make sure it's going to cycle. All right, here we go. So we'll go ahead and do 15 rounds again, and uh, we'll go from there. So this could be a more stout round. I don't know how it's going to feel. It's the same grain weight of bullet. So let's try it out. Center target. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we like to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly on the channel. Uh, the firearm has locked up. I cannot get the slide loose on it. So we're not going to fiddle with it here at the range. It's done. The trigger has been pulled. The gun did not go off. Not sure if we have a light primer strike. We're going to let this sit for a couple minutes to ensure that it is safe. Uh, but in the meantime, the ammo, ink, ammunition, for whatever reason, is not cycling through the uh, PSA dagger. So why don't we just compare the length of the rounds real quick to the blazer. I was expecting it being 9mm, that it should be fine. And just looking at it, the rounds, if you guys can see that, we'll just kind of match them up. They are basically identical length. So I don't know what the problem is. I'm not sure if it got caught up on something. So we're going to... Take this home and finish up with it. Okay, guys, unfortunately, we were forced to end this one a little bit early. I want to explain what happened here. But first, let's just take you through the uh, results of the ammo test uh, to show you how we did with that blazer ammunition. So let's go ahead and run through our five groups that we were able to run. Center group, 1.026 of an inch. Top left, 1.527. Top right, 2.205. Bottom right, 2.194, bottom left, 1.182. Overall group average was 1.4096. Totally acceptable for Blazer ammo. Then we shifted over to the Ammo Inc. ammunition. And as you can see, there's only uh, one round that is missing from the box. And that round is actually stuck in the barrel. So when I go, went back and watched the video, what I thought was a light primer strike was kind of interesting. I decided to go ahead and uh, turn the camera off. And then I safely cleared the firearm. And the slide was actually locked. I was not able to get the slide back or forward. I did pull down on the takedown levers and was able to get the slide to slide forward just like a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, just enough to basically get the slide uh, to come free off the frame. 
and uh, it, it came out, right? And the barrel is basically locked in the slide. So I just went ahead and just gently tapped just one time with a hammer on the back of the barrel and the barrel just kind of popped, uh, popped out and just, it, I'm now able to get it out. So it was just kind of wedged in there a little bit. So here's the deal. There's a round that's in here. We're going to gently uh, remove the round here in a little bit. But anyway, I decided to go ahead and measure the ammunition. These are 115 grain hollow points. Now, according to my Lyman 50th um, edition reloading handbook, 115 grain hollow point is supposed to be loaded to a cartridge overall length of 1.090 of an inch. We are currently sitting at 1.127, 1.124, and 1.23 uh, or 7. Uh, on just a random sampling of three rounds pulled from the box. So I think that these were loaded a little bit too long. Um, you know, which, which it, you know, many times would not be an issue, but I mean, that's pretty significant going from 1.090 to 1.128 or seven, that could be just enough to cause functioning issues. So we're not going to do any kind of testing with the ammo ink ammo that's done. I might just run this through my AKV or something that'll just eat it up. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, the, the PSA dagger performed just fine with the ball ammo. I would say maybe get yourself some Hornady Critical Defense or get some Federal Hydroshock ammo. You shouldn't have issues with it. Uh, critical Defense seems to be a little bit shorter cartridge, and I think that might help out with functioning in, in a variety of handguns, which is why I've never had an issue with it. So anyway, again, shout out to my stepdad for loaning me the PSA Dagger. We had a great time. A lot shorter tests than what I was hoping for, but, you know, these things happen. So definitely test out your firearm with hollow point ammo uh, before you decide to make that the ammo that you depend your life on, because if you just had that in the gun and never shot it ahead of time, you'd have the issue I ran into, which is what I thought was light primer strike, but was not. Something is up with this ammo. So anyway, this is Travis P11. I want to thank you guys for watching. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, subscribing and liking. All the support I've been getting from you over the years. Make sure you match that bell so you don't miss any notifications on new videos. But in the meantime, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will definitely talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a great one. Bye-bye.